Today we are going to talk about what shaping is and how we can use it in our classrooms. Shaping is defined in the book as teaching new behaviors through differential reinforcement of successive approximation to the specific tar target behavior. Teachers mold the student's current behavior into a desired behavior. This is a learning principle to teach the new, a new behavior from one that is either not there to begin with or one that is rarely shown. Say we have a student that stands in a classroom while we're teaching and the desired behavior we're wanting to see for the student to, is to sit in their seat for the duration of the lecture, say a 20 minute lecture. We can use shaping to help them form that desired behavior and learn to sit in their seats for the lecture rather than standing in the classroom. In order for us to be successful in shaping behaviors, we have to start by determining what the terminal behavior is, what we're wanting the student to do. This is something that the students aren't currently doing. So in our example, our terminal or desired behavior is for the student to sit in their chair during the 20 minute lecture. Next, we need to determine what a behavior is that the student is displaying or something the student can do that resembles the desired behavior. So in our example, maybe our student sits for 15 to 20 seconds in his chair before standing back up. Each time he sits in his chair for 15 to 20 seconds, we reinforce that behavior. We want to reinforce often, so something simple like a small token may be a good option. Sometimes it may be beneficial for us to determine baby steps that need reinforcing. These baby steps are also known as intermediate steps. These will be reinforced until that baby step is thoroughly established, and then we will move on to reinforcing the next step. Going back to our example of wanting our students to sit, sit during lectures, since they are able to sit for 15 to 20 seconds, we will move to reinforce after he has, sit, after he has been sitting for, say, one minute. Then once they've been sitting for one minute, we'll move to reinforce after two minutes and so on until they are sitting for the full 20 minutes. Reinforcement. Shaping without reinforcement is impossible. We have to reinforce our students for each correct behavior or any behavior that is closer to the desired behavior than the one before. We have to reinforce in order for them to stay motivated. This is a gradual change in behavior and without reinforcement students likely will perform as expected. There are several dimension behaviors mentioned that we are mostly all familiar with as the, at this point that may be shaped. Topography or form, duration, latency, fluency, force, or intensity. Our book gave a great example of the dimension of topography. It spoke about training or shaping a student to be able to make the ah sound when they hadn't been speaking. At first, they were reinforced when any sound was made, then only if a vowel sound was made, then only if close sounds were made, and finally only if exact ah sounds were made. Our example of the student that was standing in the classroom and we desired him to sit for 20 minutes during the lecture would be a great example of the duration to mention. We set small steps to reinforce that gradually led to the student to display the desire, desired behavior. The hard part of duration and intermediate steps is to determine the size of those steps. We want them long enough that the behavior is established, but we don't want them too long that the student doesn't ever reach that goal and never gets reinforcement. In our example, we wouldn't go for, from 1 minute to 15 minutes, but going from 1 to 2 minutes is more reasonable. We want students to respond when we ask them to do something, generally when we first ask them. When we are shaping a latency dimension of behavior, we are reinforcing a student to respond to our request sooner and gradually shortening the time until the desired latency is achieved. Our example from the book on fluency rate or speed was a timed test that the teacher expected to steadily increase this number of correct responses from test to test. 
An example of the force or intensity dimension could be that we desire to have students raise their hand when they want to ask a question or make a comment. The force or intensity of how they raised their hand. Did they jump around with their hands up? Did they say, call on me when they raised it? Or did they sit quietly and wait to be called on? The book says, Shaping provides a means of developing new behavior in students of all levels of ability. This learning method can be used in many aspects of teaching in and out of the classroom. As parents, we use shaping a lot as we are teaching our children new skills and they thrive on that reinforcement they receive. The same is true in our classrooms. Conclusion. Shaping is a learning principle in which behavior itself is changed by learning an entirely new behavior. We as teachers can mold and shape our students to demonstrate our desired behaviors by reinforcing them as they gradually change and work towards that target behavior. It takes time to do, but if we are consistent and think about our students' individual personalities and needs, We can help them change and perform the the desired behaviors we have for our classrooms.